beat the shit out of you. Then, 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 you go, then you go ahead and open the door. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you, um, I thought you only cast it twice. Uh, it might have been twice. I thought it was three, but twice. I thought you healed him. I thought you healed each one of them once. He did. Yeah, I think okay. I think you accidentally cast it like. You didn't roll it on him, so it rolled it a second time. That might, it might. Right, be. okay, that's why I'm taking three. So I'll, I'm going to tick two off here then. Yeah, I got one more, fellas. Uh, yeah, so just uh, so you know, this is, this is as far, this is the top of the stairs, just so you know. So we, are, we, are, we are at the top level right now? You, you're at the, t when you were standing outside, you noticed that there was like three levels of windows and like an attic space, but the stairs uh -huh. no longer go up from here. So you're this. Like, so the stairs would be somewhere else if there are some. Yeah. So if you wanted to get into the attic space, this is not there. there. This is not the place to do this it. Is not the place to do it. Right. All right then. It's obviously not how you get to the basement where the children were supposed to be in the alternate reality. I mean, the actual reality that we started in. We were supposed to go to the basement, if I remember. Yeah, where he, they, they said there's a monster in the basement. Yeah, I, I believe that was a uh, trap, dude. Well, there's a monster up here, too, so what are you going to do? I'm going to open this double doors. Ready? No, but do it anyways. Ooh, a tiger. Part of one. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, this room has some uh, double doors leading into it, as you can see. Um, actually, you could see through it a little bit, but it's it's it was sort of a, an etched glass. Uh, the doors were actually uh, designed with windmills that are etched into the glass. Um, again, this room is another one that's kind of filled with cobwebs. Um, they're, the windows are covered with these burgundy drapes. Uh, but the bed is like a four-poster bed. It's really nice. It's got embroidered curtains that kind of come around it. Um, a matching uh, pair of wardrobes are against the south wall there, the, the one on the right. Um, there is a tiger skin rug that you've seen that's kind of rotten and kind of tattered and it's not looking too good. Um, but and then there is a uh, web filled parlor kind of where uh, Grudemall is standing right there uh, with some uh, chairs and corners. Uh, but there is a doorway that goes out and you can kind of it's got a window in it, too, and you can kind of see it leads out into a balcony. And there's another one that appears to be like. Uh, leading to a closet. But above the uh, fireplace in this room, there is a picture of what you now know their names, uh, Gustav and Elizabeth Durst. Can I move the uh, tiger skin and see if there's anything under it? Okay. Uh, roll investigation or perception, whichever one you want. Finding it, Thorin. Yeah, I was grabbing the wrong thing. Sorry. That's all right. It happens. Yeah, for a second, it's like, ah, oh, shit! I got disconnected from the server. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. Server dump. <laughs> uh, all right. So you you roll back the uh, the, the tiger skin and kind of check the floor underneath of it, and it doesn't appear to have any sort of trap doors or. Uh, anything other than than a floor underneath of it. It's a very nice floor. <laughs> but, uh, it's, but it's just a floor. <laughs> it's just a floor. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> very nice. It's got a very nice uh, hardwood floors and the tiger skin rug. I'm going to go uh, scope out these wardrobes here. Okay. Do I need to roll anything? Uh, no, they're unlocked. Um, 
Let me look at them. Hang on. Uh, yeah, so they're unlocked. They they contain some very nice, uh, you know, clothes, some very fine clothes, uh, but that's all. Uh, Thorin, over by you, I forgot to mention, there is a, uh, like a vanity kind of desk. Um, there is a very nice, like, trinket box uh, or jewelry box that's sitting on that desk over there. And there is a mirror, uh, Bork, right there in front of the closet that you're standing in front of. There's like a full length mirror that's that's there. Empty out the trinket box. Yeah, is is it the trinket box unlocked? Yeah, so you pick it up. It's it's very nice. It's also very nice. I don't know why I'm going to go to it. Very nice. I don't know why I got the Borat. Very nice thing going on, but I do. Uh, you got Borat for your DM tonight. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is made with uh, silver and gold filigree. It's ornate. Uh, it does open quite easily. Uh, it contains three gold rings uh, worth about 25 gold pieces each, you think. Uh, for each of us. There is a thin platinum necklace, and it, it contains on it, like a dangling from it, is a topaz uh, pendant. Very, very uh, ornate, very well. Uh, very wor worth quite a bit. You think it's worth about 750 gold pieces. Uh, hey, uh, that necklace, you guys want more heels later on, or I'm just asking? <laughs> you only got one. <laughs> Yeah, you think the gold, the gold, uh, the jewelry box itself is actually probably worth seventy five. Uh, I'll just keep, uh, I'll, I'll just keep a ring and uh, let the other bunch uh, fight over the the rest of the goods. I like how you unilaterally decide what we're going to do with the loot. I suggest <laughs> that we'll um, kind of put it all together and divvy it up when we're done with this. Yeah, Bag it I'll, up. I'll, I will throw it into the. Uh, there's a. There's a party sheet that I can throw all your inventory in. Bag nice it up. try, Thorn. Nice try, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and take this drink. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> the one that's got the arcane engravings on it, I'll take. <laughs> yeah. I'm go ahead, go Thorn. Ahead and take that. Smack him with your mall. <laughs> no, for party, you. The party died all in this bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my, my sleeve, you know. I can I can keep us going. If you guys want to keep getting hit by stuff, I can help you out. I'm just saying. Listen, preacher boy, you're dealing with two alcoholic freaking dwarves. You might want to pipe down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> one for me I'd, I'd be I'd, I'm pretty sure I'd be talking to at least one dead dwarf nah only got a flesh wound uh does it look like there's anything of value on this table over here no, it looks like a, like a like a bedroom uh, or like a like a breakfast kind of like a sitting area. room sort of deal. Yeah, there's like a little picture and, and a picture and a, and like a little goblet for drinking, you know, whatever you want to. Is drink. there any but actual breakfast on it? There's there's not this this now this is what you would expect this area, you know, uh, like in a it almost looks abandoned, uh, cobwebs everywhere. It's yeah, aged. Yeah, it looks like people haven't been in here in quite a while. I opened this door before, and I'm going to open it again. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is filled with cobwebs, uh, but it, otherwise it's empty. Mm. Uh, this room here looks like it goes out to a belly. Did you say there was a window in this room, in this this door right here? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're you can see outside. Uh, it looks like the fog has kind of pressed in on the house a little bit, uh, to where it's it's not very far away from the house. That thick fog wall that you were seeing outside. 
And this here looks like it's probably the wind, uh, the door to another dumbwaiter. Yeah, it looks like it's a continuation of that dumbwaiter system that was that you've seen on the other floors. Ah. Uh, well, worse comes to worse, I believe me and Thorne will be able to get out that thing, but I don't know that Boris will be able to. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's even too small for you. Maybe like a. Uh, like a like a if you turned into bunch a bunch of laundry or a druid or something like that, yeah. All right then. Okay. Well, I calculate that's the end of this room. All right. Where do you all want to move on to now? He just did. There's a door right here. Opening this. Okay. So this dark room contains a wooden tub. Uh, it's got those claw feet, you know, kind of like holding a ball, uh, yeah. you know, on the tub. Ball um, and claw. Yeah, exactly. I love it. It's got a uh, like a, a kettle stove, an iron stove. It's got a little a little kettle sitting on top of it, and then over in the corner, there's a barrel and a spigot. Um, it looks like this used to be some sort of a cistern that that. Uh, you know, a cistern system, like maybe it collected water somehow and they use this for like a uh, like a wash basin or something like that. Um, it's a bathhouse. Yeah, like it looks like a little bathroom. Bathroom, yeah. I want to take a look inside this. Uh, I'm not actually in the tub. I'm in front of the... Uh, right. So, get in the tub. I want to take a look inside that, that, that wood stove looking thing. So again, it's it's cobwebs, uh, some remnants of burnt coal, um, but it lo doesn't look like it's been used in quite some time. Ah, so there's a water feature like uh, on that barrel. Like, can you um, manipulate it to where uh, you know? Can you see if the water comes out? Yeah. So as you as you kind of turn the spigot to turn the water on, it looks like uh, you know a few drops come out. It looks like the system's not not working like it once did. Further up we go, the more we get into de depreciated uh, landscape. Right. Yeah, we're we're already at the top floor, right? No. Yeah, you're at the top of the spiral staircase. You, you noticed outside that there was another f attic type level or another floor, maybe even. We just haven't got there. Yeah, no, those stairs don't lead any further up. Okay, I've got well, two doors. Well, hang on, man. There's got to be a way to get up in there. There's always yeah, access. Might be beyond these two doors. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I didn't see those. Yeah. Go. Okay. I'm going with this one. It looks like a linen closet. Yeah, that's that's kind of what you're looking at. Yeah, it's it's lined with you know uh, folded sheets, blankets, old bars of soap. Um, there's a broom kind of sitting over in the corner. There's a broom there, but everything's unswept. Hmm. Well, and I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll tell you guys, it seems like whatever's behind this other door that I have yet to open is going, it's going to enter into a relatively large part of this floor. Because if you look at the rest of the, um, damn it. If you look at the rest of the map yeah, down below, the uh, there was a lot of this building on this other side of this staircase. So, so this is probably going to be some action. So, everybody needs to gear up for that. And by everybody, you mean you? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that that too. So as you enter this room, I am going to lock the tokens and let Thorin get kind of back there. Oh. Uh, uh, there is a door to your right as soon as you enter, and then some more doors with like uh, windows in them uh, yeah. a little bit further down. Uh, you can kind of even see out them. It looks like another balcony. Uh, but sitting uh, on the side of the bed, uh, it it looks like you, she's translucent. You can see through her. 
Uh, but it looks like a, a woman dressed in servant's clothes, like maybe even like a nursemaid's clothes. And she's sitting in the corner uh, of the bed, just kind of crying, facing away from you, facing towards the fireplace. Is she ghost-like? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. She's translucent. You can kind of see through her. Uh, so you assume that, yeah, that she, has, she has moved on. I uh, pull out my holy symbol. <laughs> She she is she is an ex parrot. <laughs> she has ceased to be. <laughs> yeah, but okay. she's just kind of crying. Maybe she's only maybe she's mostly dead. <laughs> okay, so but the tokens are locked. You said the tokens are locked. You haven't I haven't made your roll initiative. You're not quite in combat. She's not coming after you. Uh, so she's just kind of. She kind of has her like hands or uh, face in her, her palm, you know, like a, her her, her, her head palm. down. Yeah, she's like crying into her hands. Is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I kind of whisper into Grudemall's ear as best I can. It's time for you to be diplomatic. Hello, lady. Damn it! I don't have much of a charisma, dude. My charisma. Hey, lady. <laughs> what, what? What's the issue? Uh, as you as you speak to her and she kind of hears your voice she kind of just quickly turns around to you and says stay away from the baby ah okay okay and she's looking at you Groot Maul, since you're get away standing, from me Boric <laughs> she's standing you're standing right next to the door uh at that and she's so she's looking right at you well, that means that behind one of these doors is what she perceives to be the baby, I believe. Yeah, you would kind of uh, get that impression. Yeah. I'm uh, assuming I heard her say that. Yes. You and while yeah. all the dwarf in front of me is going, uh, uh, what, what baby? The baby. Do not go into the into the nursery. Uh, I, just stay away. Don't hurt him. He, he, he's never done anything. Please. But we're not here to. We're not here to. Uh... Hey, baby. Yeah, we're not. We're not here to do that. I would, I, well, this is what I'd like to communicate: that we're not here to hurt the baby. We're here to save the baby. And can I roll a persuasion on that? Even yeah, right though now. it's going to be terrible, <laughs> mostly because my charisma is like eight. My tire shot that lady. Oh, that's a zero. I'm very persuasive. <laughs> that's a critical fail, man. Never seen a zero. <laughs> she thinks I'm going to eat the baby. Now that I said that. Hey, dude, our cousin master has never seen a zero. I've never seen a zero rolled. That's that. impressive. I'm, I'm happy to have been a part of this. <laughs> you are. Yeah, that's, uh, she, she just looks at you and says, do not hurt Malachi. He's not hurt anyone. Please. Uh, I, I never, I never would. Stan, I mean, Boric, trying to, trying to convince her that we're not here to hurt the baby. <laughs> you know, my Christmas nine. Your Christmas shitty too. Hey, uh, Thorin, how's your charisma looking, buddy? I can't mad a game like that, dude. Stop it. I know. I'm just he's saying. A, he's as bad as you. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, well, yeah, fuck that, baby. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out who's probably the most persuasive. Okay? It's not me, clearly. <laughs> I rolled a zero. Hang on, I need a minute. Oh my god, you all, you, all three of you have minus one to charisma, yeah. Ah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 <laughs> council, we are not, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I need a minute, hang on. Could tell what your dump set was. <laughs> yeah. Stan's losing it. Boric's losing it right now. I reach into my pack and I pull out another beer. <laughs> Hang on, I'm losing my shit. Yeah, I probably should have warned you. Uh, 
that this is how this works. Oh, no, you're perfect. As Mr. Perfect. Mr. DM, my friend. You are you are more than fine. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. 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 I leave with the Gruden Hall and I go, so what do we do? I don't know. Not what I just did. She, she's still not moving to attack you. She's just kind of standing, like, making sure that, uh, you know. Is she even, like, watching us wearily, or is she just, like, seemed to kind of be in a loop? No, no, she she is definitely, uh, she's definitely uh, cognizant <laughs> of what you're all doing. She is, she is staring at you, telling you not to go to well, that. That's I, 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 I'm hypervigilant. Oh, my God. Like hyper vigilant. Yeah, yeah. She was like standing at attention, looking at you now, like standing there. Is she? Other side of the bed or other side of the bed? She is on the on the far side of the bed, closest to the fireplace. She's now standing. I can't see the fireplace because it's fat dwarfs in my way. Uh, well, he froze up the damn tokens. <laughs> yeah, you can still move. You can still drag your token. I'll just approve it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Boric, come on in. Don't be shy, Thorn. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, she doesn't appear like she's going to actually do anything until we do something. So, Boric, why don't you throw that door open right there? Wait a minute. Is she a ghost? Yeah, yeah, she's definitely. I got us not to hurt the baby. Right. Well, we have something to our advantage, and that's that we're not planning on hurting the baby. So, what if we hurt the baby? Unless, of course, the baby attacks us, then we might have to deal with both of them. Good. Dude, tell her we're not going to hurt the baby. <laughs> yeah, he did. I, it didn't work. I did. Yeah, I rolled a zero. <laughs> what she got from it was. I'm gonna eat the baby. Yeah, he's definitely gonna hurt the baby. Yeah, no, no, her, her and I are not on good terms at this moment. So throw that door open and let's uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Wait a minute, which door are you opening? Jesus Christ, you were standing right next to a door to open. <laughs> oh, this is that's the door that leads out to the balcony. It's, like I said, the, the fog is getting quite uh, close to the house. Yeah. Well, the door. I'll go back to the other. Good old Bork opened up the most inane door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. As you open the door, you see inside of there, it, it's definitely a nursery. Uh, cobwebs are everywhere. Um, and you do see a crib, uh, and there is a tightly wrapped bundle that's laying in the crib. Uh, it's uh, like swaddled. Uh, and as you move into the room, uh, the the nursemaid says again in a very loud voice, "I said not to hurt the baby." And she comes after you, and she is now attacking. So now we will roll this. There we go. I'm guessing the baby's up. Freaking ghost baby. Well, I got your back, dude. Throw yeah. down on the baby. Yeah, throw down on throw down with those heels when I get freaking mauled. Thanks. She, she uh and she she comes after uh uh me. Right? Well she's she's gonna go after uh Bork because he uh he went through the man. door. But yeah, you get an attack of opportunity because she is moving yeah, through you in space. Through. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that attack. Oh, on. <laughs> Sorry. Where is she? I don't see her in the on the map. Combat tractor. Tractor. Oh, she on the map. Oh, there hey. she is. Okay. Nurse maid. Dude, you're gonna nurse maid. Oh, gonna, this is gonna what? be. This is how shit works, man. Sorry. Nice. She partially resisted it. See, I'm not good with suits of armor, but I'll beat up a nursemaid all day long. 
right. The armor, armor gives you trouble, but yeah, yeah. I get intimidated by dudes with armor, but a, a ghost and a, like a, a night shift. Shoot, I'm 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 thrown down on her. All right, so uh, Borg, she reaches you and she reaches out an icy cold hand oh, no. Oh, no. to try to oh. touch you. Uh oh, she'll touch. Oh, but she she barely misses you. Uh, you if she reaches out, you kind of pull away from her hand. All right, Sorry. Thorin, put the beat down on her. We dwarves, we stick together. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Whack. I need to get one of the things that he's got. Oh, oh shit. Maximum damage. Wow. Yeah, you no, and Jupiter. She is she, for a ghost, she's not looking good. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Let's turn on the fight music. There we go. Right, crew Maul, you're off. Alright. <laughs> Mister, that time, I did. I did. I have to. <laughs> the board gets to have some. Uh, Bork, eat one of those scrolls I gave you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wait a minute. Now you don't have time to read a scroll right now. Want a bet? Uh, of course I didn't get any, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got no scrolls that are really going to help me. Spiritual weapon. Don't, don't sweat it, dude. This isn't a boss. We'll be able to take her down. Not World of Warcraft, dude. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, I saw uh, uh, it was Thorn hit that thing. I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna swing my mace at it. There you go. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, get on the damage. Freaking whack. Oh, did you, uh, let's see. Let me put it on there. There you go. So for it is looking it is looking pretty beat up for a ghost. Uh, but she's still coming after you there, Warwick. Because I went after you, baby. Right, she's focused on you. I like the ghost guys. <laughs> She still can't reach you with those icy cold hands. She misses. Thorin, you get another crack at her. Boom! You're all rolling well. Good night, lady. Nice. Yeah, Ooh. as you as you hit her again with your ball, she just kind of, you know, puffs into a, a cloud of smoke and dissipates. Yeah. Uh, in front of you, in front of your eyes. Am I the only one guilty about all this? You know how guilty I am about this. I look at Thorn yeah. and I say, I look at Thorn and I say, there is no problem that cannot be solved with your mall. Oh, okay, let's address this baby. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so in the nursery there, you, you like the, like I said, there is a tightly round bundle uh, laying in the crib. Need a minute after that, you know? I mean, what just happened? All right. Get it on, brother. Okay. What's in the crib? We What's tokens. in the crib, bitch? <laughs> there you go. Tokens are unlocked now. I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh, are you looking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, do you want to like do anything with the bundle or? I'm not touch a damn thing. 
Yeah, then that's um, all. That's yeah, uh, that's the only other thing you see in here is that the crib with the bundle in it. And it's there's something in the bundle. It looks to be like there. Yeah, the, like there is something in the bundle. It's, it's a bundle of something. All right, unbundle it and see what's in there. Okay, as you start to unwrap the blankets, uh, it looks like it just continues to be more blankets, and there's nothing inside of there. Yeah, bitch. bitch was crazy. Yep. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, Lauren, right standing have you seen? Uh, is a, there is a mirror, uh, for another full length mirror. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That I'm in? No, 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 where Thorin is. Thorin's standing right in front of him. Oh. A little credenza right there, opposite the bed. Yeah. Well, you guys can I off? see myself reflecting in the mirror? Roll a perception check. Are you a vampire, dude? <laughs> I hope not. Dude. I really hope not. You better not. Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. PvP. All right. You, you see yourself just fine, uh, and as you're looking in the mirror, uh, you can tell that it's slightly pulled back away from the, uh, or actually, sorry, pushed slightly into the wall. Like, it's not flush with the wall. Like, it's slightly indented into the wall, only on one side. It looks like it's, like, on the right-hand side, it's slightly pushed in. Okay, can I, I'm going to go try and, and manipulate it. Can I do, can I manipulate it? I'm yeah. Anyway, yeah, as you kind of kind of pull and push on it, it looks like it it's it's like on a hinge. Ah. I I work that thing and, and and turn it on the hinge. Okay, yeah, as you and as you 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 can kind of tell it kind of pushes in, and I'm going to move you out of the way, Thorn. It uh, reveals a very uh, cobwebbed. Uh, choked uh, staircase going up. Ah, you guys, settle down, little Bork. Settle down. <laughs> you gotta stop calling me that. I'm twice as tall as you. <laughs> it's not about height, dude. It's not about height. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. Um, before we go up here, should we check out this other room over here? No. I think it's up we up up and away. I think we should go check out the southern room. I'm gonna go to the restroom again. Thank God. You fucking feel like dude, that's cool. All right. So man, it's, it's a damn We're just go do it. Apparently we're great, you guys. It's all right. He, he called fast. break. He, he, <laughs> He takes a lot, but he but he, he pees very fast. So, you know what? He's six foot four and about three hundred pounds. He he's got me on the height. I'm six foot three, but I weigh about three seventy. So, <laughs> both you couple of big fellas. Yeah, but he's all fat. All right, he's <laughs> all, <laughs> all yeah. fat. I would like to say like I'm 360 rip, but I'm not like that's, that's, that's not that's not the case. The funny thing is, is I'm five seven, about 170 pounds. <laughs> that's, about yeah, that's about what Brandon is. You were right. So we didn't do anything while I was gone. Oh, we waited for you. <laughs> Uh, you docked some experience points for random piss breaks. What? You kind of docked your XP, but but he's impressed with how fast you do it. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> you pee very fast, so that's, that's yeah. Well, it's out, it's out the door, and make a hard right, and then there you are. <laughs> All right, do I want to go up, or do you want to go somewhere else? All right. Boric, you seem interested in uh, exploring all the. Uh, I don't want anything coming up behind us. You know what I mean? I don't think we need to sweat that. I'll be honest with you. 
There's not a lot of here to be sneaking up behind us. I think you're the one that should be doing all the thinking here. Because we just fought a ghost, right? So, <laughs> that's yeah, I see how that pan out for the ghost. <laughs> right. So, you, oh, all right. <laughs> so you're gonna go over there? You want oh, me to go over here for me to go up the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going. Uh, what? Isn't this where it's at? Yeah, yeah, it's right behind that uh, mirror there, right directly, not in the closet, there, right next to that. Yeah. All right here. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna move y'all to the next. All right, fellas. So I'm not like going up here all by myself, right? Um, no. <laughs> okay, good. So, Thorin, you went the other way. Are you wanting to go up? <laughs> yeah, he's he's splitting. Yeah, <laughs> which way is up here? <laughs> Hang on, I'll move you to the next map. Hang on. There you go. So this uh, this cobweb-filled staircase that you're climbing kind of comes to a landing, turns to the left, and it comes to a uh, small closet door type. It's, you know, it's a smallish door. So, but, but from what we can see, the further up we go, the more the more uh, depreciated yeah, everything man. becomes, right? Right. Right, yeah, it's it's definitely getting more uh, more dilapidated. Yeah, definitely more cobwebs, dust, Damn. dirt. All right. All right. So, Grudemall, you as you enter this hall, uh, it is definitely again still choked with cobwebs, dust. Uh, there is a small door that uh, leads onto a, a very small balcony, um, but there are doors to your uh, to the to the bottom of the map and a couple doors to the top. Down the hallway to the left is another door that you can kind of spot. Okay, I can see. So we've got four doors to choose from. Clockwise or counterclockwise, fellas? You're just doing what you want to do, so, you know, go ahead. No, I'm not doing what I want to do. I want to know what everybody else wants to do. I didn't, they don't really like dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you picked a bad company. Who does, really? But Yeah, it kind of happened, but, you know, it's cool. I'm sorry, that's a lot. Oh, this so, is locked? That was locked. Sorry. My bad. All right, so let me close it then. No, yeah. can't close it. <laughs> yeah. I already closed it for you. You can still see it in just a little bit. But, but basically, yeah. that, is a, uh, that is a locked door. Um, but, however, it looks like the key that you found earlier might just fit in that. That would be you, Pork. Yeah. Okay, I'm using the key. Yeah, so you put the key in, and it turns, and you hear the locking mechanism click. Oh, no. It's open. Or you Woo! can open. Uh, so if you all would like to go inside, you can. Uh, 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 if you all like to go inside, you can. Yeah, a boy. For not liking dwarves, you sure do seem to like me. I like you on point. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know. <laughs> so this room does contain a two uh, small beds. Look like they would be more child size beds. The window in the room has actually been bricked up, uh, but on the, uh, either side from the beds, uh, on the opposite wall, is there's a door or there's a dollhouse. Uh, and you notice it looks like it is a perfect replica of the that you are currently standing in. And on the other side is a small uh, like toy chest 
Uh, however, the, the most prominent feature of the room is lying right in the middle of the floor. And it is two small skeletons uh, who are cradled uh, and are, you know, holding each other. Looks like they passed away in each other's arms. Uh, there's also a small stuffed animal uh, that's, that's laying with the, a small stuffed doll that's laying with the skeletons. And the skeletons are clothed in clothing that looks very familiar to you. Uh, clothing that the children outside were wearing. Uh, this Where is be the monster? Tragic, tragic and very creepy. Yeah. And so this, these are skeletons looking like long, long, long dead. Yeah, long time ago. Of the children that asked us to come in here. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh. Spidey I'm going cru- to cru- <laughs> cruise over here to the uh, the dollhouse and, ins- and inspect it very closely, as closely as I am capable of. All right. As soon as you get over to the uh, dollhouse and start looking at it, you hear from behind uh, all of you all as you're looking at the dollhouse. Hey, stay stay away from our toys. Uh, and as you whip around to see where that came from, uh, you see uh, the ghosts of Rose and Thorn standing behind you. The the two children. The two children. Yeah, uh, their 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 specter forms are a little less stoic. Uh, they they're looking like actually concerned. They actually have human emotion on their face. And they do seem actually upset that you're getting ready to mess with their stuff. I Don't step, touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch I it. step away from the dollhouse quickly. This and I say, I'd, I'd never touch your toys, children. I'd never touch them. Oh, okay. Thanks. How, how did you, how did you all get in here? We've been, we've been stuck in here for so long. You showed us the way. We, no, we haven't. We haven't left this room in, since Mom and Dad used to come up here. There's two children, very much like yourselves, that asked us to come in and help with the monster that lived in the basement. Is there a monster that lives in the basement? Because if there is, I'll have him. Yeah, yeah. Mom and Mom and Dad told us to come up here because they're trying to keep us from you know, being hurt by the monster in the basement. And they told us to come up here and they, they, they locked the door and they never came back. And it, it, it got so long and we got so hungry and then just, well, we, we, we died. Where exactly is the basement downstairs? Uh, so as when you ask that Rose points at the dollhouse uh, and you look at where she's pointing and you can see that there is a secret stairwell uh, in the room that's kind of across from you all like across and to the right as you were to exit there's like it's a storeroom and in there there's a secret door that leads to a spiral staircase that goes all the way down to the basement the, the house doesn't represent the basement uh, but it goes all the way to the bottom. Are there more children? I, this is what I asked the children. Are there more children around here, or is it just the two of you? Um, we, we haven't seen Maximilian for quite some time. Uh, and he was the little one. Yeah, that's, that's our baby brother. I, I think Mom had him last I seen. But she was going to the basement, so she probably didn't take him. Oh, Mom is the monster. Oh, I don't know what would lead you to believe that. (laughs) Mom is the monster. We need to go down there. Well, we're going down there. All right, children. If, If you're going to the basement, what... Would you would you take our bones to the crypt that's down in the basement and, and bury them? I'd do that. Okay. 
thanks for not breaking our stuff. And then they kind of disappear a little bit as you collect their remains. So the, the blankets that are on these beds, are they like so wasted that they couldn't be used to wrap up those bones and tote them down? No, this is, it's been fairly preserved. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely showing signs of, you know, threadbare and stuff like that, but, but they're not going to dust. No, that you could definitely use them to, to collect them, collect their bones and remains and, and, and put them in your pack. All right. So that's, that's what I'm into. All right. So you, yeah, you definitely collect them all and put them in your pack without any problem. Excellent. Now, now we go. Now, if I understood one of these doors yeah the one to the bottom of the map is where you've seen the uh the door the secret passage kind not of not that right. one <laughs> i take it yeah not the one to the top the one to the bottom oh okay well that was it then no over here dwarf Arr? yeah no he went the right one. Oh, he did yeah yeah he went he went the one that she showed you yeah so the uh, Over here, uh, dwarf. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? As you all enter this uh, chamber, you can tell this is definitely a storeroom. There is, uh, you know, just sheets put over top of, you know, what appears to be like couches and sofas and, and, and things like that. Uh, there is a stove in this room. Uh, it looks like it hasn't been used in quite some time. Uh, and there's also that you, you can tell there is a trunk or a chest of some kind uh, also covered next to the stove. Uh, but right next to Thorin is where you can see the uh, the staircase. There's a door that reveals itself, actually, as you walk in. Just kind of. Oh, right behind, right behind Thorin there. Exactly. Yeah. And this is a window over here. Yeah, that's a that's a window that, that just shows you outside, basically. I got you. So this chest right here, I think that might not be a bad idea, Boric, for you to uh, investigate that thing. I'm sure that's what you would think. It's just a well, it's this. We're, you don't like dwarves, and uh, <laughs> there's two of us and one of you. So you, uh, it's not that I don't like you, but fuck your handful. <laughs> yeah, it's that one I drew the circle around. That's the one with the chest. Gotcha. So, I, okay, I thought we were going. I thought the chest was in the room over there that we had to go down, but it's this. Yeah, there, there's a toy chest in there, but there is a like a covered up chest with a with a cloth chest in this room. So, what am I doing? I'm gonna take a good hard look at this chest. A good hard one, huh? Oh yeah. Investigation? Is that what I need to roll? Yeah, go right ahead. Keep grabbing the wrong thing. Oh, that's a good roll. Take a good hard look at it too. Were, were you looking for like traps or just? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you don't see anything like that. It looks like it's just a dusty old covered chest, like a like a like a trunk almost. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm going to crack this thing open. Okay. Uh, inside, uh, you see another skeleton. Uh, this one's definitely adult size. Uh, and this one is dressed more like what the nurse maid that you all fought uh, was dressed in. Uh, the same type of uniform. Uh, however, this one, the, uh, the uniform is actually just kind of coated and stained with blood. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bummer, man. Actual corpse. It was skeleton. Yeah, it's the clothes that are that are that are stained in blood. Yeah, make a uh, make a medicine check. I have that. I have it better. It's not a very good one. Yeah, you you can you yeah you don't. Can really I make one? Yeah, go right ahead. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You're more no idea what's going on, but you can detect 
that this person was stabbed to death multiple times. You can kind of make out the knife. Uh, through oh. the uniform. Uh, yeah, but definitely stabbed in the heart several times. Uh, and oh. it's put in this chest. All right. What is this person? There's somebody's ass that's going to get kicked before this night is over. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Nothing else around this room that, uh, or should I throw something? <laughs> looking what at. What was the question? Throw I'm just kind. I'm just kind of looking around the room, make sure I'm not, uh, you know, that I'm not missing anything. You, uh, you kind of look around the room, and then nothing else catches your attention. All right. Uh, should I see the book? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to get ready right. to get downstairs. So, all right. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to put you on the next map going down the. Leroy! <laughs> you know, I actually had that in a thing. <laughs> I found a book for that. <laughs> I actually, had the, one of our bards keeps dying, so I had this song that was like, "Why you always dying?" Why you always dying? <laughs> just a troll, just a troll, my group. But anyway, I'll put you on the next map. When we started playing WoW. We were just probably weeks away from the Leroy Jenkins. Uh, yeah, we started. We started. Actually, I bought Stan World of Warcraft for Christmas in two thousand and four. And, awesome. and and I bought it in October of 2004. Yeah, that's that's about when I was playing. It is that was soon. the very it was the very beginning of the of the the weirdness. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you descend probably about 50, 60 feet uh, through a very tight uh, spiral staircase, and it comes out into this. Uh, Kind of like a like a carved out um, uh, complex of uh, tunnels, um, and so where you're standing in now, you can see that the tunnels lead to the left and to the right, uh, and in front of you there are like a you know little uh, doors or alcoves that have been carved. Uh, I'm not on the map. Am I supposed to be seeing myself on the map? Go to the upper right. So it's like it's like arches carved into the the, the corridors. Found it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a you know like a like almost like a cave system, that sort of thing. Yeah. But you know, well hewn. It's it, it's not uh, you know it's not badly done. The one thing that does stand out as you as you stand down here a little bit uh, for a couple of seconds, uh, you almost Im you, Im it starts to immediately kind of tell that there's like this eerie sound coming from the distance, like a chanting almost. Uh, you can't make out what the chanting is or what they're saying, but it, it's kind of echoing all throughout uh, this uh, this this complex. Do we have more than one voice? It does sound like more than one voice, yeah. But can, like but can we get a beat on which direction it's kind of coming from, or is it just kind of everywhere? Yeah, from right here where you're standing, it just seems like it's kind of echoing from everywhere. You you really can't get a good feel for which which direction it's coming from. It's kind of coming from all over the place. Uh, and it's multiple voices or one? Yeah, it sounds like multiple, multiple, like almost like a chorus of voices. Okay. Has anybody seen? Her, has anybody ever seen uh, Heredity? Is that what it was called? Something like that. That weirdness at the end of that movie. I don't think I've seen that one. Nope. Really? Oh, that movie is fucking freaky, man. Heredity. Yeah, Heredity. Check it out. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh it, it it leads you to believe something, and then about two thirds of the way through the movie. Then all of a sudden, it's like, 
whatever you thought was going on is clearly not going on and then you're lost uh, and then then the where it where it ends you're like going i never would have saw that it's that's where you think we are now yeah sort of <laughs> <laughs> okay um i have very limited visibility here Okay, well, I've stepped up and I'm uh, looking down this corridor that's off to the left and I'm looking uh, to the right. Yeah, you can kind of see inside there. It looks like uh, these are crypts that have been kind of hewn from the earth. Um, and you can kind of see in there that there are slabs uh, in there that would normally cover like the crypt. Uh, but the ones that you're looking at right now, Grimal, uh, do not have them over the doors. Like you, can uh, get, you can gain access into the to the crypt. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Okay. So uh am I am I like leading here? I'm pretty asking. much, dude. Uh, okay, well I'm going this way. Okay. We'll find out what's there when we get there, but I see, uh, I love this line of sight feature on this. Yeah, and it's very cool. I wish it, it, would, I wish it would limit you to like what you could, like the distance that you could see, but it doesn't yeah. do that, unfortunately. And but relative to the cool. lighting and stuff. Right, yeah, dim light or sunlight or yeah. whatever, yeah, it would be cool, but they said they're working on from it. From what I understand, yeah, I was going to say, from what I understand, they're, they're working on implementing that. Yeah, that's I. I can't wait for that. That'll be that will be the ultimate. Yeah, right. I would want. You've got a torch, okay? It's a twenty foot radius. Right, exactly. That would be awesome. Um, well, Taylor, where are you at, dude? Oh. So oh, yeah. where you're all headed, there is obviously, as you can see, there is a wooden table, uh, four chairs uh, surround it. Uh, there are little alcoves cut into the to this room. Uh, and it looks like they contain some like moldy old straw pallets uh, for somebody to like sleep on the floor. Oh, here's stairs that go deeper. Yeah, there's another another layer down if you want to go down that direction. Well, fellas, you just went, didn't you? No, uh, I just like took two steps down the steps. Hey. Well, I mean, what's hopefully I haven't turned Sirenscape down because this is where the Sirenscape gets good. I have not. Well, I did actually turn it down a little because we got to one point where it was blowing yeah. me out. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got it. Yeah, except a little, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah. This is already it starts to get good. This is where are we going and why? We're just going, and we're going because we don't have uh, anything else to do, really. I mean, I. I I'll be honest. I, I, I don't think exploring every square foot of this is uh, is necessarily what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish. That was my question. You know what I'm what saying? What are we trying to accomplish? Or just go down as deep as we can go and find what? That's generally where the bad shit's at, right? <laughs> at the bottom. Either way. Am I going along? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> I had to step over Thorn. <laughs> so as you enter this room, this, this room contains a lot of uh, wooden uh, support to kind of like keep the ceiling propped up. Um, but there is a well right in the center of the room. It looks like it's about a four foot diameter. Um, there's a wooden bucket that kind of hangs on the top of it. Uh, and then in you can kind of see into these little alcoves that are cut into the walls. Uh, there's bedrooms and little foot lockers in each of the rooms in these in this particular one. Hey, Grootma. This is a strange place for a bunch of bedrooms, man. Grootma, you fit in that bucket. 
Huh? I bet you fit in the bucket. Now, I'm asking if I cannot, under any circumstances, fit in that bucket. Uh, me and Fern will swing you around, dude. Get in it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but I do see some more steps going. Are these going down or going up here? Those are going back up. Really? Huh. What's this over? Should we check this well? All right. Yes. Got those. I take this again. Got now, dude. I'm going to the bathroom. Oh my god! You know what uh, can I do it to? What do you want to do? Check out the well? No, I want to take a bio. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We'll take another five minutes. How about that? All right, you're all, you're all making good progress. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be back in a minute. All right, so let's go. Yeah, we'll take five minutes. Take a break? Yeah, we're taking a five minute break. Oh, nice. I want a cigarette. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, I'm back too. Is everybody back or? Fat boy probably ain't. <laughs> He might have uh, had to go appease his uh, his peasants, his wife and dogs and stuff. Makes sense. It happens from time to time. Yeah, my dog's uh, looking at me funny. <laughs> yeah, I got up and my dog was like, oh, we're going to go outside. And I'm like, no, some of you, the kids are taking you outside. Like, oh, man, I'm glad it's not just me. Every time I move, <laughs> No, man, no. <laughs> so do you all you all play regularly or do you, is this the first time you've played in a while? 
you can tell, right? It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very infrequent. I mean, uh, Mike is he's a real estate appraiser. He's been working for the county for uh, for the assessor's office for ever, and he just retired. I'm a contractor, so um, yes, it's been a long time, and it's very yeah. few and far between where we actually get to play. Yeah, I completely understand that. It makes sense. Yeah, that's that's the good thing about my job is right now I'm working from home, even though I'm a trainer for the prison. It's uh, it's they've told me just go home and work from there. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. So, like, yeah, no, that's cool that you can pull it off, man. <laughs> right. I, and and how much training do you think I'm doing from home? Like none. So like I sit here and bring my email up at the beginning of the morning and wait for somebody to email me. Until then, I'm just like working on D and D shit. Like, that's what oh I'm doing. yeah, dude, living the good life, man. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I'm a I'm a septic contractor. I'm a sanitation. I do mostly septic systems, and you know I could do sewer plants if I had to. But it's a shitty job, but somebody's got to do it. That's right. <laughs> I'm the I'm that guy. I'm a semi-retired real estate appraiser. I already told him that, dude. Shut I up. Oh. I mean, you can tell. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Over the line. Sorry. That's all right. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow when you come over here, I'm going to slap the shit out you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I forgot to tell you my truck broke down. I ain't going to make it. Uh, I'll, I'll come. I'll come get you. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm a foot. I'm about a foot taller than Stan is. Yes, anyway. Everybody's yeah. about a foot taller than me. <laughs> and I'm the dwarf. And Stan wanted to roll a hill giant. I said, no, dude, you can't do that. And I Everybody did anyways. Wants, I just didn't bring him in. Everybody <laughs> wants to be something they're not, you know. Yeah, yeah I know, exactly. Tall, we'll be the one to be big. <laughs> well, you know what? Why the fuck live vicariously if you're going to do it with something that you already are? I mean, <laughs> why? who would do that? Uh, well, that's why you. Mike rolled a right. In that's why honesty, Mike rolled a I rolled a six foot three freaking cleric. Dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I I think in this sort of environment, the hardest person to actually play, honestly, is yourself. Yeah. You know, it's easy to say, oh, I'm I'm this thing that's nothing like me because you know it's like, well, ah, that's. You know, then you can just kind of do anything. But if you're actually playing yourself, which is the thing I'm like big into in these games, right? Is uh, that's the hard thing to do. Yeah, if you look at that uh, that backstory that I put in the getting started thing, that's actually like like if my life were a fantasy life. <laughs> that's that's that okay. it's, it's, it. Yeah, it's yeah that higher higher. I can't even say what. It, it, it means uh, I wish I was. well no it's actually like my background if i were in like a fantasy world you know if that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah so. oh totally yeah okay. all right well do you all want to go up or where do you want to go well we're obviously here not here for the money so <laughs> um let's uh let's and you know we're we're three hours into this, and we don't want to take up your whole dang night for for oh, this. So. I've, I've blocked off like five hours, so you you got I've got nothing to do tomorrow. So you, you all, when you all want to quit, you tell me. So I'm what are you a freaking Sam? I think we're good to go, dude. What are your guys' thoughts on heading heading uh, heading up? I don't see anything in those other rooms. Uh, well, opinion, uh, yeah. Um, Are you going that way? Yeah. He's going that way. Those are my thoughts. So, <laughs> as you get uh, into that, as you get uh -oh. into that area, you start to hear the chanting a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on just a second. All right, Ted. Let me see. So, as you walk through that area, make a... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> make a uh, make a dexterity check. Okay. okay. Me dexterity check. Oh, that's not bad. Oh yeah. So as you step onto the square that well that Thorin just stepped onto, yeah. uh floor gives way slightly. Uh yeah. but you feel it in time and you, you're able to step back. Uh but the floor kind of falls away and you see below it there is a uh like a pit with uh rotted wooden uh stakes kind of sticking up into the air, uh, like spikes at the bottom. Damn, that was close. I was like, an iron gut. Yeah, but you, but you avoid it. So, but you can easily step across it. So, okay, I got rope. I'm across it. Yeah, so you can definitely hear coming from the stairs uh, down that way. This, uh, he is the ancient. He is the land. Is coming down from there. Well, uh, from, yeah, those, from yeah, this those, direction, right? Yeah, straight down the map. Uh, yeah. It goes to like a landing, and you can kind of see it kind of turns down. Yeah, because all these other things I see kind of lead to this. Yeah. Are you guys coming, or what's the deal? I'm trying. I had to move. All right, let me put you on the next down map. Okay. All right. So as you enter the next area. This one here. Yeah, this is a, you can see a bunch of pillars uh, and a bunch of alco uh, pillars in the middle of the room. Surrounding the outside of the room is a bunch of little alcoves kind of carved into the, uh, to the earth. And there's just a mass of small trinkets, little treasures. They're just bizarre. Like you can see that there's one that's uh, uh, in like, that's looks like an orb that's made like with an eye or a, a dagger that's got like a rat skull for a pommel um, and then towards the towards the bottom of the, the map you can see uh, one chamber or one uh, tunnel goes uh, to another tunnel and then one leads down like a slope down and at the bottom there is a portcullis uh, that is closed huh. Oh, and it, it reset. Oh, hang on. I got to fix that. It reset my map effects. It's about to get real weird. Hang on. Oh, oh what the? <laughs> That's the water. You can do that? <laughs> That's the water effect. Yeah. So I'm kind of inclined to kind of uh, timidly poke through some of these potential treasures that are laying around here. Okay. So do you want to, do you want to look at all of them? Do you want to hear about them? Yes. Uh, so the first one you come to is this little yellow hand wrap. It's mummified, uh, you know, hand with sharp claws. It looks like a goblin's hand. Uh, and it's on like a loop of a rope. Uh, there's a knife carved out of human bones. Uh, there's that dagger with the rat skull for a pommel. Um, there is uh, a folded cloak made of stitched like ghoul skin almost is what it looks like. Um, there's a dissected frog that's like lashed to a stick. Um, like a, almost like a wand, you know? Um, there's a bag and when you kind of open it up a little bit, it's full of like bat shit. There's like a, a witch's finger that looks like it's been severed. Uh, a little mummy that's, uh, got his arms crossed over his chest. Uh, there's a shriveled head of a halfling. Uh, there's this iron pendant with a devil's face on it. And there's a small wooden coffer, uh, 
and inside of it is looks like a wolf's tongue, like a big one though, like a dire wolf. So as I'm going through these oh, things, these things. I'm like just kind of dropping bad. these things into my into my bag as I go, as long as they don't make me feel funny when I touch them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're you're slightly creeped out by them, but they don't make you feel any certain way, like they're magical or anything. No, yeah, that's that's my concern. Yeah. Well, we place unless, unless, yeah, like you said, unless it makes you feel funny, grab it up. <laughs> they, they don't turn you into a newt, so. They, okay, well, that that that's my concern. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, the port calls down here is closed. Down here, so did, so did I bag all that stuff you were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. You got every bit of it. All right, good, good. Probably gonna catch a curse, you greedy dwarf. <laughs> Dwarves are funny like that. But you can definitely tell that the the he is the ancient, he is the land. It's, it's coming, coming from, from this. Yeah, it's coming from there. All right, then. I have no spell. Let's all go out and take a day off. I don't think that's reasonable, dude. Okay, well, I you know I can't help you, man. All I can do is fight. As you uh, as you kind of descend that ramp, you can kind of see through the portcullis into that room, um, and there is on the there is a dais in the middle uh, with an altar that's on top of it, and then around the outer perimeter, around the uh, the, the balconies, as it were, uh, there is a bunch of druids. Actually, that's it's locked. You can't get in there. I don't. They they when I reset the map, it reset all my fixing of everything but uh around the uh, the outer balcony is like about 10 druids uh they don't seem like they're real like they're almost translucent almost like ghosts um but yeah that's what you see but i'm gonna back you all up because you can't get in here are they are they taking oh. any notice of us or me as i enter well no you can't enter the the port calls there is closed sorry the map is fucked up oh okay sorry that's okay uh, you do notice that there is a wheel kind of off to your left. You can kind of see through the portcullis. That looks like it would raise the uh, the portcullis, but you can't reach it from where you are. But no, the druids that are standing on the balcony do not take any notice of you at all. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm right there bellied up to that thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, well. But yeah, they're just con constantly over and over. I don't want to do it to you all, but yeah, that's you know, in the in the sound effects, but yeah, they're constantly he is the ancient, he is the land. It's just over and over and over. Well, we can approach this two different ways, fellas. Really? You got Woo. We can try to bust through this thing. Or we can split and find out how much all this shit's worth that I just picked up out of these things. <laughs> and just bail on this whole thing? I don't yeah. think so, man. Uh, so you said there's a, a wheel, but it's out of reach to raise the portcullis, it looks like? Yeah, it looks like it's it's just on the other side to the, like if you were to enter the room, it would be just to the left, um, but it is out of reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. There's nine. There's one you can't see. Things in here, man. You know, that's a lot. And so I turn around and I look at uh, what? I look at Boris and I look just... at Thorin, and I say, you know, battle doesn't prove who's right; it just proves who's left. They're ghosts, right? man. They're ghosts. They might not even be real. Look, you can see through. Mm -hmm. That money could surely buy a lot of ale and mead. Yes, it can. Is 
and that's why we're here. Is that why we're here? Because well, it's easier to get money for booze. Oh, come on shut now. This thing down. Here. I, I mean, we come this far. We've come this just to what? Loot some freaking tor- trinkets? I, I don't think. Uh, fuck that. That's what he's here for. He was here for a dagger with a rat skull. <laughs> Pummel. I got my shit. Let's go. Yeah. Uh-uh. All right. Well, here's the thing. Okay. So I'm going to step around you. Right. Because I can't reach that thing. Right. Outside, and, it's outside the the porculus, right? On the other it's side, a, it's, on, it's on the inside. Yeah, yeah. so it's like kind of like a locked from the inside sort of deal going on, right? And, uh, so, would a rope do something? Yeah, you could try or, that. <clears throat> you know, what's it look like? What can I use to manipulate like a, that thing? It, it does look like a like a like a like a ship's uh, you know uh, helm, like a. Wheel like a ship's a wheel. wheel. Yeah. Uh, I got a rope. Okay. If I can, well, fuck. You could try to lift it. Here. Yeah, it has bars on it. It's like a, you know, like a. You, know, you could like under the giant. I can reach it. No, he's well, talking uh, about the porcelain, dude. Porcelain. Like it's you know bars that are blocking the entrance. You, they they raise up. Like you could try to lift it. Well, sure, I'll that. give that a try. Yeah, I think the strongest one of us should try that. Don't matter, game, dude. <laughs> but I'll give it a try. All right. You talk like you're starting. So go go for it. Roll a little strength check there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you it out, dude. You have it, and it it definitely lifts straight up for you. So, how do you like them dwarves now? They're uh, I want to hear, I hear lifting right now. I, I'm trying to actually air it. I can do it. Easy. So it is open if you all would like to go in there. Well, you know, it's funny. This Boric's going to have to get crawl under it because I'm just a dwarf. I can only lift it about three feet. True. He will have to die. But you can walk right under it, but I got to crawl. Man, talk about turning the tables, dude. Dude, dude, this is, uh, this is going to be bad. But they're incorporeal. There's got to be something. Dude, an yeah, empty suit of armor the almost killed us all the other a little while ago. Remember? Yep. As you walk into the room, they do not pay any attention to you at all. They continue their chant. He is the ancient. He is the land. Reacting to us. And what's on the dais? There is an altar up there. No people or nothing. Nothing. Doesn't seem to be any people. There is uh, a chain that's kind of like above it with a hook attached to the ceiling, descending from the ceiling. Uh, but there's actually on the altar. I say we just move it towards that thing. Is, is this water? Yeah. So there's about a th- it's about three foot of water, uh, and then there's about another two foot up to the uh, to the balcony that all the the cult members are standing up there on. Well, it makes me wonder, if these guys are going to ignore us, what happens if we freaking straight take the my battle axe and hit one of them in the back of the head with it? Sounds like something you'd do. Huh? It sounds like something you'd do. Yeah, well, so otherwise, if we go up into the middle of this thing and then they all decide they want us, then... So, you know, so this is what uh, uh, Grudemall says. He says something along the lines of, 
you know, every bit of planning avoids a little bit of blood in the battle. Make your move, dude. Wait, that's not what I said. <laughs> uh, dude. So let's say I move there. Does anything happen? No, they they he does that that one that you're standing right beside just continues to chant. He is the ancient. He is the land. He doesn't even acknowledge that you exist. Completely and totally ignoring me, huh? Yeah. I'm in the water. So what if all three of us set up a spot right next to one of these guys and unload on them? Unload on what? These cultists. Because if we do that, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten of them. If we... If we can one shot three of them, we've knocked out thirty percent of them. You're fighting something that's not even there. Come on, the dais. You said uh, there's a hook on it. A- yeah, there's like a hook above you. Um, as soon as you uh, step onto the dais, the chanting of "He is the ancient, He is the land" stops. The portcullis you hear uh, behind you slams closed. And fucking knew it. You hear a different chant coming out from the cultists, <laughs> and they're chanting over and over, "One must die. One must die." Dude, it's that. I'm getting off the dais. I'm going back over there. Oh, too late for that, dude. No, it isn't. I'm in the water. Right here. Have we picked up anything across this uh, this adventure? Like a, a, I know we picked up some jewelry and stuff earlier. It's continuing. I'm just stopping it so it doesn't irritate the fuck. Freaking funky stuff. Like what? What did? What are you? What are you talking about there, Thorn? Like what? I know in that one bedroom, uh, we had three rings, a necklace, and then we picked up all that shit in that last room. <laughs> right. I've got nothing in my inventory that suggests I have any of that. Oh, yeah. So all that crap in the next room? Yeah. I, I It's not actually a... Uh, all stuff. money. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's just stuff that, I mean, I could like type it into your inventory, but it's not actually... Like things I could drag. You on floor, man. Is there something that we got in there that we could use in here? Roll a uh, everybody roll an intelligence check. Okay, looks like I win. Okay, uh, Borg. So you you pick up on every the the two dwarves have no idea what's what this is all about. But Borg, <laughs> you, you, you guys stop listening. He had typed this whisper to me on the chat. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea that. Uh, oh, do you want me to whisper to you? I can do that. It's up to you, man. It's up to you. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just tell you, it's not that big of a secret. Uh, you definitely get play. The, that uh, that. The one must die means that they are demanding a sacrifice and something has to die before you you are like, or something bad is going to happen is kind of what you get the idea of. Now, is he communicating that to us? That, that'll be up to him. Well, I, I just now heard it, so. Uh... Okay. Well, 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 Oh, actually, I didn't notice. Did you? You moved off the dais. He did. He ran. All right. I ran. So, as soon as you step off of the 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 dais, uh, you hear the chant change again. To Lorgoth, the decayer cometh, or we summon thee. Sorry, Lorgoth, the decayer, we summon. Thee. Ah, fuck.
the you see over in the little alcove um at the bottom at the bottom yeah this pile of trash starts to kind of move towards you all Fuck. slightly Settle it's down. It's a shambling man. Oh, no. Settle down, Stan. Settle down. <laughs> so, roll. Uh, we're going to roll initiative. It looks like the shambling man won the initiative. All right. Uh, this has got a big, fat suck factor. And the, the shambly mound one in this. Yeah, he can't move very far. Uh, so he's, he's moving slowly at you. It was, so what it looks like is just this big mass of, of like tendons and body parts and like just, you know, you know, just a uh, guts and gore and, and muscle and sinew and all this and kind trash. of trash. Yeah, just trash. <laughs> just moving right at you. So he moves about right there, and actually, as he appears, all the cultists kind of disappear. Like they just fade. Yeah, they fade away. Uh, so that is his turn, actually. Support. Uh, what am I going to do? Y'all still there? Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. Oh, okay. It's my turn. I think I'm gonna, uh... Uh, 60 feet. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast uh, Sacred Flame on him. Go right it's, a, it's just a cat, but it's something. All right, how do I do that again? Bring you up here. So uh, click on the little like uh, magnifying glass over to the right. And it's a save. So what you actually do is... Got it, cat. Yeah, just put the die, put the uh, save on him. And then put the, put the uh, <laughs> radiant damage on him. I put the save on him. Yeah, yeah, to just take that... Dex DC 13, put it on him. So he fails, so just drag that 1d8 radiant damage onto him. There you go. Can it move? Yes, you can move, absolutely. Can I do anything else? Uh, unless you have a bonus action. I mean, you only move five feet, so you could move another, what, 25 feet if you wanted to. Yeah. Not. I'm going to stay right here. I'm done. Or of course, you're in uh, difficult terrain, but yeah. Oh, uh, your device. I'm on the steps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, once you get there, you're, you're not in difficult terrain anymore. Move up to the top, and that'll yeah. get me out of difficulty. Yes, you can do that. That is no problem. All right, you fucking motherfuckers to come fight this thing. <laughs> it's Grudemall's turn, so we'll see what he does. Okay, so here's my question. I would like to run down this uh, this little rampart here, right? Okay. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. 
five. Now, my my intention is right because I have the fighting style to go two handed, and I've got two hand axes, okay. right? Which which that should allow me two attacks per round, right? Yep. With the second at a disadvantage. No, uh, what will happen is is that when you take that uh, second one, you just don't add your uh, uh, your uh, what is it called your uh, proficiency bonus. Now, but in looking at this, not to get all ruly on it, right? That's the wrong one. As, as, as a, as a fighter, with it says, when you engage in two weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. Right. Yes. Right. That is true. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay. So I, wasn't, I wasn't paying attention where you said you, you had the two weapon fighting style. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you basically get a multi attack. Is basically yeah. like One, two, three, four, five. Now, if I dive off of this thing. Yeah. Right, because I've got twenty-five feet per round. I can get to there. You can, and make those two attacks. Absolutely. Okay. First, first one, because I dropped the big axe. <laughs> right. Nice. No. And then the second one. Jesus. I take it that's a miss. I let me look. That is a miss. But you hit him once. So I did hit him once. I was over there, ran down the thing, jumped off, landed on him, and started hacking at him. I'm a bad motherfucker, dude. <laughs> that's bitching, man. <laughs> That's all I'm cool about. So, Thorin, you're up, sir. Um, you said this water was what three, four foot deep? It's about three foot deep, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take the approach of going up on the ramparts and kind of doing a jump attack as well. Which direction are you going, bud? Uh, how far can I move? Was it twenty five? I thought we will take an action, but if you dash, you can move fifty. Okay, I'll dash. Okay, but then you yeah, but then you just don't get an action. It's basically, I'll, you're I'll take move, I'll, move, you, you, I'll move about right you, here. You can get there, but you won't be able to do anything once you get there. Right. Now, do you have a, do, that that twenty feet goes across the water? Yeah, so that would be difficult to train. So he could get about right there. That's about yeah. that's about right. Yeah, with a dash action, so. All right. Oh, let me take the rake. My opinion of dwarves is improving. <laughs> you better get ready to heal me, Borg. All I got right. nothing. I got nothing. So the shambling mound uh, there, Grudemall, lifts up this large tentacle, like like you know, appendage thing. <laughs> Oh! Oh! oh shit. And it hits you. There goes your rat-headed dagger. I'm sinking into the damn water. All right. Uh, oh, I'm so still alive. You're still alive. However, what happens is, <laughs> since it was since this was a critical hit, it, that that appendage wraps around you. Grapple. Pull, yeah, you pull and it pulls you into uh, it, its its body. Um, or it's well, it's not a body. It's 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 just mass. the mound, the mass, yeah. And, and as you're in there and seeing and just being you know surrounded by intestines and body parts and all this other gross stuff, you see a very small baby that has like intestines coming like out of it and like you know it's all looks like it's like at the core of this. So that mound. baby is the core of this thing. It's kind of what it's looking like. All right. So, uh, oh, work, <laughs> work you up. Oh. 
Where am I on the map? Oh, there. No. Yeah, you're on the dais up there. Ah, shit. I'm gonna move Grood Molly into the into the map. There. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I am now the shambling mound. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Stop screaming into the mic. That'd be a good start. Sorry. Next start would be taking some steps forward and hammering this thing. I'll handle the baby. <laughs> Time of priest. You got a mace, brother. Yeah, I think you're right. That's all I can do. What about that spiritual weapon scroll? What about it? That's got to be something, doesn't it? That can't be a passive thing. I mean, I'm not saying you got to use it right now. I mean, I'm a long way from that. Hey. Christ, this thing's a book. Ah. Yeah, basically it casts cast spiritual weapon. We don't really know what that is. Oh, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a <laughs> you create a floating spectral weapon within range uh, that lasts for the duration until you cast the spell again. Uh, when you cast the spell, you can make a melee weapon spell attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier, which yours will be wisdom. Um, and then as a bonus attack, you can move it. Basically. So it's basically kind of like a DOT. Yeah, yeah. It's well, it's it's more like a like a an, another like a minion. Term. Yeah, it's like a minion. Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay, how do I use that? Because yeah, I wouldn't like, use that so until so one of us is dead, dude. Yeah, you I'm can use, use it now. Yeah, so I'll say that you read the scroll, and I will put a token on there for your spiritual weapon. Okay, so it works, I think. <coughs> there you go. So it is cast right beside it. So basically what uh, it will do is it... That's it quite the hammer. To, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it rolls to hit, so I'll just, I'll just roll for it. Oh, but it misses. So that's a bummer, man. Cheap ass Chinese spiritual weapon. <laughs> right. But now you have your attack and and the spiritual weapons attacks. Then you got two attacks the next time. All right. Grood Maul. Okay, so uh, even though I'm grappled, because I have, I went in there with with uh, a, a hand axe, a small uh, hand axe in each hand. Yeah. Even though I've been grappled and pulled in, I still have an attack. Yeah, you, you feel like you can get, you know, you're inside of there, but you feel like you could, if if your target is something internally there, you, feel like you may be able to uh, get get at it. All right, Dan. Kick his ass. Oh, wham. Yeah, you hit it. Uh, I should have rolled that inside. You heard uh, it, too. So what happens is you 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 kind of get your hand free, uh, free enough to where you you kind of just swing it at the at the baby uh, inside of there. Yeah. Uh, the axe embeds in its skull. Oh, and, nice! And the entire shambling mound, mound just falls apart uh, as the baby just kind of withers and dies around your axe. Well, that's gonna make it hard to sleep tonight, dude. <laughs> With that image in my head. <laughs> so as the uh, the mound kind of disappears, um, the cultists return. I'm not going to put it back on the map. But the cultists uh, return. And this time they have a new chant. And that is, the end comes. The end comes. And they're just chanting it over and over again. Uh, after about the third chant, you kind of feel like a rumbling around the house, 
as if it's shaking the basement, the foundation is even shaking. Might not be a bad idea to get out of here. <laughs> oh, run away now, huh? I will. Honestly, I don't even know what we've just done. Hit the road. Oh, yeah, let me unlock Damn. the tokens. You're locking the tokens? No, no, I'm unlocking uh, the tokens. Oh. So there you, you can move freely around. So my thoughts are maybe we should split. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I don't know, man. I think we're kind of done here. <laughs> what just happened? We just killed their god, dude. Yeah, and they're they're chanting just over and over. The end, the end comes. And so I don't want to be here for that part, right? Go <laughs> run away. <laughs> so. Do you all want Unless to? Unless you want to stay down there and beat up on them while they're standing there waiting for the end to come. Are you all trying to get to the top of the the spiral staircase? Because that's, that's my right. thoughts. Okay, so I'm going to put you in there. Wait a minute! I, I, that's what I'm doing. Oh, is that what the, is that? What the, uh, Thor Borg? and Borg can do whatever they want to do, but I'm splitting. I took all the shit from that one room, <laughs> right? And I'm bailing, man. Yeah, no all the shit, no man. Problem. They're saying the end's coming. I don't want to be here for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you do you want to do you want to follow uh, Grudemall or where do you want to go? Thorin, are you there? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. They already got him. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to follow Grudemall up the spiral staircase? Where did he he's gone already? Where'd he go? I don't know. I'm freaking splitting, dude. I'm up by the tiger rug. Dude, what? All right, well, Grudemall, this is what I'll tell you. You see up there. <laughs> okay. Over here. Hang on, Thorin. I'll, I'll move you guys over there to the uh, to the room. Yeah, we're calling dumbass. Oh, sorry. I moved you to the wrong place. There you go. Oh, over here. Okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm cool. Hang on. Where did I... I lost Bork. Bork, where'd you go? He's down there hanging out with those cultists. No, oh, he's, he's asking. Uh, for, he's asking for an application, I think, or something. All right, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, can I be one of you guys? Uh, as you, Grudemall, and the rest of the party, as you all enter the uh, the the uh, storage room at the top of the stairs, you notice that uh, the door is open uh, that you came into, but there are these swords. There's they're swinging uh throughout the door like a like you know just this constant like swinging sword machine uh the stove that's in there uh is actually starting to spit out some some of this black smoke is is coming out of there and the whole house is shaking and, and you continue to hear even from below the end comes I realize he's half dead who is <laughs> You is. We're not even close to half dead, dude. Actually, I'm pretty well beat up. Yeah. But yeah. That's why I don't want to be here when this house falls down. So one of you guys figure out those swords so we can get the hell out of here. <laughs> okay, so uh, the door at the bottom uh, and the way out. This door? Not this I mean, door. That is like a, a window that leads. You can see that there's a balcony down there. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Take it back. That's a window that is completely bricked up now. This one? Oh, we yeah. can't see. Yeah, it is completely bricked over. 
So this this door right here is our only thing, right? Yeah, that's that's your only way out, and the and that's where the swords are. Yeah, it's just like this constant sword trap. Yeah. Hmm. Just for the hell of it, I'm gonna take my uh, my great sword or my sorry my my big honking axe, and I'm gonna hammer this oven with it. Okay. I don't know that that's that's gonna do any good, but I'm gonna do it anyways. What? So uh, should I roll a roll a twenty? Yeah, just roll a d twenty in the chat bar or in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, you you you. You hit it pretty good, uh, and more smoke just, smoke just kind of plumes out from it. Uh, yeah. Make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Yeah. do we die. Hey, go up, buddy. I bet I'm not gonna. Uh, Dude, that's a... <laughs> yeah, so so you kind of, the, 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 the smoke kind of chokes you just a little bit, but you're able to expel it from your lungs a little bit. Uh, and so you don't take any damage from it, but you could tell that that was just poison that you breathed in. That was a bad oh, idea. Oh, man. oh my god. Go over here then. As you look at the uh, door, you start to know, as you're paying attention to it, you start to notice that there is a pattern. You may be able to jump through it if you can time it just right. Alright, which one of you guys wants to try that? What your checks, brother? Huh? Uh -huh. I'll do it. All right, make a uh, <laughs> make a uh, dexterity save or saving throw with advantage. So how do I do that? Uh, click. See down there at the bottom left where it says ADV. Click that and then roll. Oh, your okay. Throw. Yeah, I got, you. Your throw, I got yeah. you. Or you could just roll it twice. Oh Jesus! Oh, oh yeah. So, the, uh, the the you you jump through. You try to time it just right. You jump through, uh, and you make it through, but not without a blade hitting you. Oh, and you take you take some damage. You you see him ah! fall down I, on the other side. I, I can't. Get, I have to touch him to bandage him. Yeah, you'd have to get over there to do the sort of medicine check on him. So yeah. I have to get through that thing to uh, patch him up. Yeah. Okay, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to go take a whiz. <laughs> I, Hopefully when I come I'm back, I'll be all right. Huh? Oh, what? Fix me up, man. <laughs> I can't. So you want to try to jump through? What? No. <laughs> I mean... Uh, no. Basically, no. Man, it's a DC uh, 15 uh, acrobatics check is what it is. Uh, yeah, I got a plus um, zero. <laughs> <laughs> For acrobatics. Yeah, it's not going to happen, man. I'm a clunky ass cleric wearing chainmail. Well, you got advantage. You get two rolls, so. Trying to get me to do it. And it might not kill you, too, so. Uh, mm. Okay, you know what? You got a point there. If it doesn't kill me, I get to him and patch him up because he's going to die if I don't. Right? How am I doing? Yeah. I thought you did. Sorry, dude. No, I'm you dying, dude. Go. I'm dying. That's not the same oh, as dead. Okay. I'm only partially dead. Okay, bro. Only mostly dead. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do it. Fuck. All right. I'll do it. Roll the old dexterity check. Well, you're an asshole. My dexterity is eleven, man. All right, here it goes. Good luck, dude. I'm counting on you. I'm gonna get hit, right? I'm on you. Love, I can catch you up. Dude, stop screaming into the goddamn thing. <laughs> Let me down with your goddamn thing. All right, roll it once more. I just got nailed. I didn't click advantage. 
Yeah. That's, oh, so uh, you, ju- you jump through, and and yeah, they catch you again too. Uh-huh. But it only does nine points of damage. So, so you, fix me. You're, you're, you're not. <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> like fix me. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Oh, <laughs> look, I'm out of bandages. Shit, man. I'm sorry, dude. Thor, you want to jump through? Yeah. Do I need to roll uh, acrobatics or dex? Yeah, acrobatics. If you if you got a plus to that, if you're proficient in that. Oh shoot, man! Did I have? Yeah, I, I looked at you. You weren't. Yeah, I roll, believe. Roll it, roll it again. Get an advantage on it. Nice. All right, you jump through. You you, you land on the other side. Hey, Thorin. Unscathed. Thorin, make Boric bandage me up, and if he refuses, beat him. <laughs> Come on, dwarves have got to stick together, buddy. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, Bork, roll your medicine check if you want to bandage him up there. I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> yeah. It should be alphabetical order on that skills section. Yeah, it is. Oh, there it is. I'm dying over here. Come on. <laughs> Wait now. Yeah, yeah, you can roll a message check. Yeah. Yeah. You suck. Yeah. Well, it was good enough. All you needed was a 10. Yeah, so that was he, sweet. he was bleeding out, but you uh you got the bandage on in time. He's Stop not shit. stable. So, well, that's good. You want to carry him out? Why? Him out? <laughs> yeah, you guys are dicks. No, <laughs> one does. I was the first one in almost every door, and I was like, oh, oh, "He's not good to us anymore." <laughs> you guys don't even notice that I'm fucked up, man. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. No, that was heavy damage. I'm dead. Remember? Dying? No, I just pulled you up, home chicken. Damage exceeds hit points by 11. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It was an instant death. <laughs> all right, well, you, all, uh, you all scoop uh, Groom all up and make it uh, the rest of the way out of the house. Uh, See, now you know why I'm so surly. <laughs> this is the shit I gotta go through. <laughs> uh... Once you get to the outside of the house, uh, the house uh, is continue. You can see that it's continuing to shake, uh, and then eventually it just kind of implodes on itself and just falls down to the ground in a pile of rubble uh, with you all on the outside. Uh, out there, the, you notice that the children are no longer there. Um, but um, well, even though they're crying. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, you made it out not there. Yeah, the children are no longer there. Um, the The fog has dissipated from the front of the house, and the road is clear. Um, so just to just to get you guys where you know to railroad you to railroad you out, just like I railroaded you in. Uh, <laughs> I can. Do it, dude. We'll say that uh, you, you take a little bit of rest. Grudemall uh, recovers. Enough to limp, anyway. Enough, huh? to, enough to limp along the road. Uh, you still have no idea where you are. Um, uh, hang on. There we go. Uh, so you go along the road for a little ways until you come to this large wall, like a fortified uh, wall of a fortress. There's a very uh, large gate that is open. Flanked on either side of the gate are two statues of uh, look like knights <coughs> uh, with uh, you know, ah, plate, plate armor. 
Yeah, holding swords, and those knights are decapitated. And that is where we will end because that is where Curse of Strahd begins. So nice. we all just started Curse of Strahd. So if you want to start that, now you like I don't have to run the Death House. So sweet. Dude, that was a hell of a lot of fun. Well good. I'm glad you all liked it. Uh, yeah, awesome. I, I kind of feel like we hand pissing ourselves. <laughs> dude, dude, back off of the microphone a little bit, partner. If I'm loud to you, you can turn me down. If I'm loud to all you guys, if you all you guys can let me know that I'm too loud, I can turn it down. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that was good.